Good evening, I'm Fred for here, as always, and uh, welcome to a new episode of My Take On Raw for uh, April, April, wow, May 29th, 2017. So, uh, Raw's War was pretty good th- tonight, we had a, we had some decent mass- masses, matches, sorry, I'm having trouble talking tonight, apparently, um, you know, it was okay. Uh, the match, really what really stuck out to me, and I'll get to that in a second, but what really stuck out to me was the little vignettes that we saw from R-Truth and Goldust. Um, the matches were okay. I, 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 they, were pre- they were pretty forgettable. The, probably the best thing going on right now on Raw uh has to do with the revival. Um, I really don't know much about them. I like the angle that they're doing where uh, it's Enzo and Cass. Um, but uh, Enzo Amore is getting like beat up, but uh, some people and Cass is saying that it's you know it's got to be the revival. But they're maybe making you think it might be Cass. Um. 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 Honestly, the matches were okay. Uh, I would say the best part, best match of the night was probably the uh, tag team with um, Neville and TJP versus um, Austin Aries and... uh, uh, a gentleman, whatever his name is, I don't remember his name. I'm uh, I'm not good with the cruiserweight division. I'll be honest with you. I don't watch uh, 205 Live or anything like that because it's not that interesting to me. Um, but those matches, that match was actually really good. Uh, the impromptu, impromptu match between the Hardys and uh, Dean Ambrose versus Sheamus Cesaro and. The Miz was okay. Uh, the main event was all right. It wasn't great, um, but then the whole thing with the with uh, uh, Corey Graves looking down at his phone while they're talking about what's going on, and he's like, "I'm sorry." And he takes his headphone off. He walks away. Um, I don't know where that's going. I hope it goes someplace good. Um, I hope it doesn't end with Kurt Angle being removed as the GM, because although I think he's a little shaky, uh, his, his, uh, days as GM haven't been, he hasn't been the GM for very long, and I'm hoping that develops into an actual good storyline. Um, but let's get to the part that I liked, the, the thing that stuck out the most to me was the little vignettes, uh, towards the end of the show with Goldust and R-Truth. Honestly, that was probably the best promo that I've seen Truth ever give. Ever. In the history of him being K-Quick and R-Truth, and then eventually R-Truth, I think he was K-Quick, I'm pretty certain he was. Um, Correct me in the comments below if I'm wrong about that, but I'm fairly certain he was K-Quick. Um, I... Yeah, that was really good. It was... They both started with lines from classic films. Um, uh, uh, Gold Dust, of course, started with a line from Psycho and... Uh, K, uh, R-Truth, rather. Started with the line from... Um, Pulp Fiction. And I thought... They were really good. They were a bit, you know... They they played to each other's strengths. Uh, And we saw saw shades shades of the old gold dust, and I thought that was really good. Uh, I'm liking the fact that he's obviously made a heel turn. Uh, Gold dust as a heel is fantastic. Um... And I'm hoping that they do right by our truth because I think he could be a very, very, very 
good character. I think he needs the development that he didn't get when he first reemerged as our truth. Once again, I'm sticking to my guns here. I'm positive he was K Quick uh, in his first WWE run. Which was really short and it was, wasn't great. Uh, it's not a great character. He wasn't very good. Uh, he's gotten a lot better. His promos are a lot better. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that there's a nice, bright future for, uh, for Truth. Um, I don't know how long he's going to be a wrestler for. I don't know how old he is, but I thought that was really good. It was definitely the highlight of the night. So, I know I've been having issues uploading lately, and that's why you didn't see anything from me for, for a couple of weeks now. I have something exporting right now that I'll upload um, probably tomorrow morning. I'm going to try to edit this and then upload it. I'm going to actually edit it on my computer because I've seen seem to work out the problems with that. But it was very good. Um, that was very good. I thought, it was like I said, it was the highlight for me of the night. Um, there were a few, you know, mistakes with the commentary team. Um... Very few things went wrong with uh, with Booker T. Uh, you know, the guy's had a few head injuries. He's also getting older, so, he, you know, he's a little slow on the uptake uh, nowadays. Uh, no offense, tr no offense, Booker. Um, but, he, you know, he's, he's good on commentary. Graves is, is usually more on point. He was, a, he, I guess he had that whole... I'm distracted because something bad's happening with our GM thing. Um, and Michael Cole was Michael Cole. I mean, what else can I really say about that? Michael Cole is probably the bane of my existence um, on Raw. Uh, obviously, JBL is the bane of my existence on SmackDown. I, I don't... I'm sorry, they just need to, to... They need to put him in the back. I think he'd be great in the back... Um, off camera. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, JBL. I, I, I know you have had an amazing career. You're not good on the mic. You're just... You're not good. You were okay in the beginning, but something went horribly, horribly wrong, and you're just awful now. Uh, and I know I'm not the only one. I've seen What Culture Wrestling's uh, video footage of people ch chanting as he's walking down the ramp, chanting "Fire JBL." I mean, and almost an entire crowd was chanting—not well, entire crowd, but a large portion of a crowd was chanting "Fire JBL" because he—he's awful. Um, he flubs his lines. And whatever ad libs he has, which I'm assuming most of the stuff he says are ad libs, because um, he's just bad, or even worse, they're terrible ad libs, um, and they go nowhere. Like most of the ad libs, they go nowhere. Plus, I here's a prick in the back I, um, so maybe not put him in the back working with other commentators or whatever but put him you know have him be like a, a locker room general or whatever they call like I like like a Undertaker is Undertaker he, from what I hear is he runs the back he, he runs the locker room basically But, you know, overall, it was okay. The Alexa Bliss thing probably could have gone better. It just reminded me too much of, like, a mocking version of uh, the time uh, Mick Foley, as Mankind, did that to The Rock. This is your life, you know, that type of crap. It was, eh. It was a nice little callback to, to an old Attitude Era uh, thing that happened that was pretty funny, but this one was just kind of boring.
So we'll see where where it goes. We'll see where that GM thing goes. I hope that ends up being something good. Uh, anyway, guys, I'm going to say DFTBA, vape on, and I'll see you in the next episode of My Take On, which I think might become a proper thing. Where it's not just going to be WWE related, because I only watch really two shows, but I like this idea. It's going to be kind of like I for Rates in a way, but I talk about like um, pop culture stuff. So, you might see, like, a My Take on, I don't know, Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Or it might do a My Take on a Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't, I don't know why I want Guardians of the Galaxy twice, but you know what I mean. Um, and that's basically it. Alright, I'm going to say DFTBA, vape on, and I'll see you next time. Oh, and uh, take a deep.